Hi there, this is Chris, Chapman the Cap from Moto Legends. Now, recently we did a series of reviews on commuting outfits. We had people who contacted us saying that after the lockdown they might decide to commute into work because they didn't want to go on public transport. They asked us what kind of outfit they could get for £1,000. We did a review showing what you could buy for £1,000, then we did one for £1,500, we then did one for £2,500, and then we did a, an outfit that was the kind of outfit you would buy perhaps if money was not an object. So we've decided to follow up now. We're doing the similar thing, but with what we might call cool gear. So we're talking about leather jackets, jeans, short boots, retro helmets, that kind of thing. We've done one already for a thousand pounds. We've done one for 1500 pounds. This is the top of the tree. This is one we're doing where the budget is technically unlimited, but actually it would be difficult to spend more than two and a half grand on cool gear. So in effect, this is a budget of two and a half grand. Now, that having been said, we're not looking to spend money just for the sake of it. We're looking for gear that looks super cool, but it's got to be gear that technically, and in terms of protection and so on, is right up there. So we're gonna be after, in this particular review, the very highest quality leather jacket we can find, the most protective jeans, the coolest looking retro helmet, pair of really rugged boots, and the finest gloves we can. Now, in terms of budget, what we have done, we've set 400 pounds for a pair of jeans, 500 pounds for a helmet, boots for about 300 pounds, jacket for 1100 pounds, and gloves for 200 pounds. So that's as a starting point. That gives us a budget of two and a half grand. Let's go over, let's see what we can find. So let's kick off this exercise with the jeans. Now, as far as we're concerned, it's got to be what we call a single layer jean. I'm gonna to have to explain that to those who don't know the difference between a single layer jean and a normal protective jean. Now, historically, motorcycle jeans have achieved their strength, their puncture resistance, their abrasion resistance, their tear resistance from having a lining. So you'd have an outer denim fabric, which is just a shop denim, and then you would line it with a Kevlar or some kind of aramid weave, and that would be what gave the jean its strength. These days, the best jeans are done in a different way. They take a really strong material. They weave it in a number of different ways into the denim to create one layer of material that's far stronger than just denim on its own. Now, single layer jeans come with a number of benefits. They are much better in terms of the way they fit and look because there's nothing underneath these jeans. If you've got a Kevlar jean, you've got a padding. They're never, quite, they're never quite as flattering. They never look as good. These are easier to wear. They're much lighter. They flow the air on the bike. When you get off the bike, they're just like a street jean. So in all ways, a single layer jean is nicer to live with. Depends, of course, how strong the jeans are. And we're going to come on and talk about that in a minute. But as far as we're concerned, the world's best motorcycle jeans come from the Swiss company Roka. And the jean that we have chosen for this particular exercise, this 2,500 pound exercise, is the Roka Tech jean from Roka. Now, I'm gonna have to go down a, a blind alley a little bit again, because I want to talk to you about the strength because it's a little bit confusing. Now, recently, a new CE test came out for all motorcycle clothing. It's called EN17092. And every item of motorcycle wear that you buy, in theory these days, will have to have a label inside that will either be marked A, double A, or triple A. A is the urban level, double A is for touring, triple A is the highest, strongest level. Now these jeans are gonna come with a label that says A. These are an expensive jean, I'm gonna come on and talk about the price, but you would not expect them, you would not expect them to have the A label in. But there's a reason for that. And what it is is that this new legislation has put lots of companies under a lot of pressure. Some motorcycle businesses have almost gone out of business because of the cost of getting an entire range classified under the CE legislation. The smaller companies, people like Roker, people like Bellstaff, have taken the view that they would have to just go for the lowest level to begin with just to get everything through the market, just so that they could make their ranges legally saleable. The reason they've done that is, if you tested to the AAA level and failed for whatever reason, you'd have to pay again for the AA, and then if you failed then, you'd have to pay again for the A. So lots of companies have just gone for the A level. So if you see a pair of these jeans in the shop, look at the label, it's gonna say A. That might not be very reassuring, but actually, these jeans are as strong as any on the market. And I think I can substantiate that by reference to a new jean that has just arrived with us. And that's called the Rokotec Light. It's the same essential construction, but it's a lighter material. Now, that jean actually passes the test at the double A level. So it stands to reason, I think, that when they test these jeans again, they will meet AA and hopefully even 
AAA. So in some ways, you're going to have to perhaps take my word on that. Not everything is as it seems. And if you're going to be driven by the label, that's fine. But I can tell you these are a supremely protective gene as well as just a super cool, super looking gene. The material they're made from, out of interest, is called armalith. Now, armalith is what's known as a UHMWPE, an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. That doesn't mean a lot to me. I just know it's very strong. What they do, they wrap the cotton around it in both the warp and the weft. And as I've said, they weave that together. It just looks and feels. If you turn these jeans inside out, it would just look like a pair of Levi's. When you're buying a pair of Rokotex, it can be somewhat bewildering because there's a huge range of sizes, fits, colorways, leg lengths, and so on. We're actually going to be making a video here very soon, in the next week or two, I hope, that's going to help people find their way through this particular jungle because it is, as I say, confusing. One of the main issues you've got, however, is and I think it's the Achilles heel of these genes, is that they have a fixed armor pocket. And it has a fixed armor pocket for a number of reasons. But what it means is that if your knee is not where Roka think your knee should be, then the armor can be out of position. And that can be a bit of a bummer. There are ways around it. Often what we do, we will put someone in a longer gene, longer leg than they need. That puts the armor lower, then we'll shorten the gene. We've got a number of fixes that help us get around that. But what I think I would be doing if you were looking at a pair of these jeans, and I'd be doing it for a couple of reasons, but I'd be going for this armor, which is the new ghost armor from D3O. Now, Roka already worked with D3O. These, are, these jeans come with a D3O armor for the hips and the knees, but it comes with the shaped armor. And the problem is that knee pocket issue, if it's out of position, if it's too high, for example, it can create a nasty bulge above the knee. It can tighten the leg. It's not perfect. When you put this armor in, because it's flat, it molds around the knee, when you're off the bike, it just hangs there. You don't know you're wearing it. But the, the nature of this is such that it forgives an armor pocket that's a little bit out of position. So if the armor pocket is maybe an inch wrong, you cannot tell with this armor. I'm not suggesting that we compromise and we have the armor in the wrong position, but a small amount of leeway is permissible with this armor in the way that you can't get away with in the with the existing D3O armor. So in our view, for a number of reasons, for the armor pocket, but also for the sheer comfort, I would be swapping the armor out. This is going to cost an extra 50 quid, but this just makes the jeans much easier to live with. The other thing, of course, that you could consider. So we are recommending this gene. This is the full fat Rokotec gene. It's priced at 350 pounds. If you add the armor, that's going to make them a 400 pound gene. But you could consider the new gene that I mentioned. That's called the Rokotec Lite. Now, that has a slightly lower slide time. The Rokotec Full fat has a 6.3 second slide time. These have a slide time of 4.9 seconds. I've got to tell you that's still very impressive because with leather at 4 to 4.1 seconds, these are stronger than leather and you do not need, you're never going to need that kind of abrasion resistance on the road. So they are more than up to the job. But the benefit with these jeans is that they come A, with an adjustable armor pocket that gives you about three inches movement up and down and they come as standard with ghost armor. So in some ways they are a more attractive proposition. So you will just have to trade off those conveniences, but you're also gonna take in, into account they are cheaper, but they are less protective. Both pairs are fantastic jeans. We've gone for the 400 pound pair, but if you are happy with a 4.9 second slide time, which as I say is more than enough, then you could also consider the Rokotec lights. So as with the 1500 pound outfit for this, 2,500 pound exercise, we wanted to find a super cool full face helmet. Now, we had allocated a budget, if you remember, of 500 pounds for a helmet. We could have spent a lot more than that if we'd gone down the traditional retro helmet uh, route. But we didn't want to put up with some of the weaknesses that many of those traditional helmets have. So they tend to be very noisy. They don't fit well. You can't change the cheek pads. They let rain in. They have venting that's either full on or non-existent. You don't get facilities like a Pinlock 120. And if we're going down a premium route, putting together a top quality outfit, we didn't want to be let down by one of those helmets. Super cool as they are, we wanted a modern helmet with 21st century functionality. We didn't want anything that was too sporty. We wanted something that still had retro looks, but we wanted a modern helmet. Now, in the 1500 pound exercise, we went for the Glamster. This time round, we've gone for the Arai Rapid Neo. No real reason for that, other than that this is a little bit more expensive and it's slotted into this review a little bit better than it did the previous one. It's not necessarily a better helmet than the Glamster. It's just a wee bit different. It shares lots in common with the Shoei. 
both the shoe and the RI, they are streets ahead of any of the retro helmets. And like the Glamster, this is a quiet helmet. It is well vented. We've got vents here on the eyebrows and an adjustable vent here on the chin. We've got cheek pads that can be changed to get the size right and a head lining. We've got a chin curtain that stops the noise coming in. We've got a pin lock 120. It's kind of the best of everything. So even though this is a very cool retro looking helmet, it is in every way a modern lid. As an aside, I should point out that Arai does things a little bit different to Shui. Now, Arai's traditionally have had and still have a very thick, very strong outer shell. Now that is great, it's very reassuring, but that shell doesn't necessarily absorb impact in the way that a softer shell can. So what Arai tend to do, they compensate for that with a really thick EPS. That makes Arai helmets a little bit heavier and a little bit larger. And if we were to put this next to the same size of Glamster, we would find that this is a considerably larger helmet and, as I've said, a wee bit heavier. Some people like that. It gives a feeling of solidity. It's a sense of heft. It makes people feel that this is a better quality helmet. I don't think that's the case. It's not necessarily a safer helmet. It's just Arai do things a little bit differently to Shui. Now, the helmet that we have gone for as part of this exercise is a helmet that's called the Ha. It's one of the graphic treatments. There are a number of graphic treatments. This particular one comes in three colorways. It costs 530 pounds. You could spend, as I've mentioned already, a lot more on a retro helmet, but none of those are anywhere near as good as the Arai, anywhere near as good as the Shui. So you could, if you were insistent, go out and spend twice as much money as this, but honestly, you get a helmet that was only half as good. We also think it's a pretty cool looking helmet. So for the jacket, perhaps predictably, we've gone for a bell staff jacket. We've gone for the Turner, which is a leather jacket comes in three colorways. It's a gorgeous jacket. This is the black, comes in a very dark brown and our favorite color, a kind of mottled mid-brown called Burnt Cuero. Now, there are three different types of Bell Star jacket, three different lengths, and I have a guy who gets very upset, gets very rude whenever I mention this in one of the YouTube videos, but I've got to do it because this may be the only time you've seen one of our videos, but there are three lengths of Bell Star jacket. There's the shorter jacket, that's the Mojave, very sporty, a bit Steve McQueen. There's the longer one with a belt, that's called the Trial Master. In some ways, this is our favorite length. It sits in the middle, it's perfect for the bike. One of the problems with the Mojave is that if you are tall in the upper body and if you're leant forward on the bike, then there could be a gap between the top of the jeans and the bottom of the jacket. So it can at times be too short a jacket. With the Trial Master, if you are shorter of stature, someone like me, it makes you look as though A, you've got no knees, but you can end up sitting on it on the bike. It's bit too long for some people. There are very few people who don't get on with this length. So this in our view is the perfect length for a motorcycle jacket. It's the perfect bell staff jacket. Now it's made using their gorgeous hand wax leather. There's no other bike jacket on the market that feels like a bell staff. It's just superbly luxurious. It feels pure quality and nothing is as well cut. There are lots of people out there who copy belt staffs, either in wax cotton or in leather. They can put the four pockets on it, they can put the belt on it, but somehow none of those jackets hang as well. None of them feel as nice when you're wearing them. Now, in terms of protection, obviously it's a leather jacket, so it's going to be very protective. As with the jeans, it's only gonna be A-rated. A leather jacket like this is gonna be way stronger than that, but it'll take an amount of time before belt staff get round to re certifying their garments to push them up to the A and maybe even the, the AAA layer. In terms of armor, this comes with D3O in the elbows and the shoulders. It doesn't have a back protector. For the back, you would want to fit a D3O. D3O is what all their armor is, but you'd want to fit a D3O back protector. D3O is the soft orange stuff. It's lovely. Once it's fitted, you don't know it's there. So in terms of a back protector, that would be what we're talking about. That's going to add another 35, 36 pounds to the price. At this level, I'm not sure that's going to break the bank. The other thing that we would be doing, however, and this is an optional extra, you buy a leather jacket like this, not just for riding. There are better riding jackets. You wear a jacket like this so that when you get off the bike, you can walk around, you can look the business. By definition, therefore, you want a jacket that's very comfortable to walk around in. And I think fitting the new Ghost Armour, which we've mentioned in connection with the Rokotech jeans, this just makes the jacket so much nicer because it's lighter, it's easier, it's always in the right position. You simply, once it's in place, you don't know it's there. So we would be adding this into the jacket as well, and I'm doing that within the budget that we're talking about today. So for a set of elbows and shoulders, that's gonna add another 
50 pounds to the price of the jacket. In other ways, this Bellstaff jacket is just like every other Bellstaff jacket. You've got an internal tartan lining, a check lining. You've got corduroy in the collar. You've got rubber buttons down here so that you don't scratch the tank. You've got adjusters on the neck and around the waist. This waist adjuster works really well. It's just the perfect place for an adjuster. It enables you to cinch it in. You've got zips on the, on the sleeve. It's got all the things that you would expect of a bell staff. So the question is, how much is this jacket? Well, when you add in the bits of armor, it's 1,160. You don't get any thermal liner for that. You have to add your own, but that's the way we would do it. Bell staff do actually have a liner that you can fit into this jacket, but we wouldn't bother. We just wear a jumper or some kind of mid layer of some sort. In terms of waterproofing, this jacket has almost nothing. And the fact is, if it rains, leave this jacket at home. It's just too nice a jacket to wear in the rain. So the question is, is this jacket worth the money? And I've got to say, absolutely not. Functionally, you can get a jacket that does so much more than this jacket for under half the price. So the jacket that we looked at within the 1500 pound exercise, the Helston's Ace Legend is twice the jacket that this jacket is in terms of functionality. But that's not the point. That's not why you buy a bell staff. You don't buy a bell staff because it's got all the bells and whistles. You buy a bell staff because it's a bell staff. And as my wife often reminds me, beautiful things come at a price. And you have to ask yourself, if you want to wear the jacket worn by Pitt, Clooney, Beckham, Tom Hardy, McGregor, and Gandhi, and by the way, if you're confused, that's David, not Mahatma, then this is the jacket you want to wear. It is the very definition of cool, you're just gonna to have to pay the price. So when it comes to boots, the best, coolest, toughest, most rugged, most meticulously put together, highest quality boot that we sell is the Urban Racer from Roker. Roker is the company that makes the jeans that we've recommended, the Roker Tech jeans. They are a fabulous boot. They have a very thick leather, but it's a leather that's been treated for waterproofing in the tanning process. So these boots actually have no membrane. And normally we don't talk about a boot being waterproof unless it has a membrane. But we know from experience, because we've sold a lot of these boots, that these boots are incredibly waterproof. Sean, who is the shop manager here, he commutes from central London out to Guildford every day. He wears these all through the winter. They do not let him down. You have to maybe in the winter, once they start to dry out, you have to treat them a little bit. But if you use a little bit of mink oil on them and keep them nice and moist, they're going to maintain their waterproof qualities. All of the best boots, all the world's best boots, have what's called a Goodyear welt. Now, these boots are Goodyear welted. It's an indication of a top quality boot. What happens with a Goodyear welt, they sew a welt around the upper part of the shoe, the upper of the shoe, and then they sew that to the midsole. And between the midsole and the upper, they put a layer of cork. Now, that does a number of things. It makes a boot incredibly comfortable because over time, your foot sinks into that cork and it molds a boot or the boot molds itself to your foot. So they are incredibly comfortable. The welt also means that you've got an extra layer that makes the boots more waterproof. So it's another indication or another suggestion as to why these boots are so waterproof because the water can't come up through that cork or it's harder for it to come up through that cork and reach the foot. So a Goodyear welted boot is also more waterproof. The other thing that a Goodyear welt does, it means that you can change the soles basically forever. And a sign of a Goodyear welted boot is this sewing line around here because that's where they sew the outer sole to the midsole. So these boots have a Vibram sole. Any cobbler anywhere around the world can change these, but basically in terms of the sole, you can carry on doing that for years and years. So I've got to say, it's a very heavy boot. I've mentioned it's a, it's a thick leather. It's very strong. It's a very protective boot. You do need to bear in mind that it's probably going to take a while to wear these in. This is not the kind of boot that you put on necessarily, walk around and you can't walk up a mountain in them tomorrow. They're going to take a little while to bed in, but it's a wide footbed. It's very comfortable. And what a lot of people say is once they've worn these boots in, they just become the most comfortable boot that they've ever owned. So it's an amazing boot, very strong on the toe, heel, the ankles. You've got this padding on, on the ankles. No way you can twist this sole. It is a super strong boot. We also happen to think it's an incredibly cool boot. It's kind of classic old school, but it's a boot that you buy for life. They're as tough as they come. They're 300 pounds, which makes them a bit more expensive than some of our boots. But actually, I think they're well worth the money because 
with some of those boots, if you've got two, three, four years out of them, you'll be thinking you've done well. I would expect that if you look after a boot like this, in 10 years, you will still be wearing the same boot. So that little bit extra that you're paying to get these boots, I think it's worthwhile. They're just an amazing boot. So as with previous reviews where we've looked at outfits for a given sum of money, we have had problems finding what we thought was the perfect glove for this particular exercise, which obviously is £2,500 for a super cool outfit. Now, the last review we did was a budget of £1,500 for a cool outfit, and we wanted to find a glove that was superior, that was demonstrably a better glove, that had a totally premium feel to it. And that we have not found easy. And I think the problem is that the better gloves tend to be more technical gloves. They're more feature laden. They are more protective. But as you do that, as you go down that route, you're not bothered about aesthetics. You end up with an uglier glove and a glove that is not as cool. And we went through all of our ranges. So we had a look at the gloves from Bellstaff, Halvarsons, Helston's, Roker, Rucker, Risha, Segura, Spitty. We couldn't find anything that we thought completely fitted the bill. Now we have found an amazing glove. It's a really high-tech glove. It's got lots of features. It comprises all the best components. But even we would have to admit, it's not an uber cool glove. Now that glove is this one, and it's the Klim Adventure Glove. And it might seem strange that we are recommending mixing or matching a, an off-road or an adventure glove with something like a bell staff jacket. But I think you can just about get away with it. It's all black. It's got a hard knuckle protector here, but you're not going to see it from afar. But this is a superb glove in every way. Beautiful and comfortable. It's made the main chassis of the glove is a goat skin. Now, goat is thinner than cowhide, but for its thickness, it's stronger. It makes for great motorcycle wear. It's got a waterproof membrane, actually a laminated membrane, so this glove will never wet out. We didn't need to have a waterproof membrane in a glove for this outfit because, let's face it, the jacket's not waterproof, the jeans are not waterproof, but a membrane and a leather glove serves two purposes. Obviously, it stops your hand getting wet when it rains, but it also just makes the glove a lot warmer. So a pure summer glove you can only use for a small period of the year. So a summer waterproof glove, I think, still matches with this kind of outfit. In terms of other features, great protection. You've got this super fabric style hard knuckle protector. It's a ceramic knuckle protector, so it's a very safe glove. You've got a visor wipe here on the index finger. You've got touchscreen sensitive fingers. It is a beautiful glove, and we think it kind of looks okay. Now, we did look at some other gloves that were similar. I think the nearest one we came to this glove in that it was a premium summer waterproof glove was the Rucker Worsley glove, but we thought the Klim was nicer and better. But some people, undoubtedly having watched this, are going to think that the Klim just isn't cool enough for an outfit like that. And I've got to say, if that's your view, I'm not sure that we totally disagree. We just found it difficult coming up with a perfect glove. So this glove priced at £190, not inexpensive, but I think you get a lot for the money. And what it loses out on a kind of cool factor, it makes up for in terms of its functionality, features and protection. It's still a great glove. So in some ways, you know, these reviews were easier when we were looking at technical wear because by and large, when you spend more on technical wear, you tend to get more. You tend to be buying into more features, into more functionality. When it comes to gear that is more style and fashion oriented, it's harder to justify the premium. So this jacket being an example, this jacket is over a thousand pounds. The Helsons jacket in a 1500 pound review was half the money of this. Is this twice the jacket? No, of course it's not. But it was ever thus, I feel, in the fashion market. And we have to ask ourselves, therefore, why is a Gucci loafer, for example, so much more expensive than a Russell and Bromley loafer? They are both using the same kind of materials. They're both constructed in the same way. It's merely that one, in this case Gucci, is in a position for whatever reason to command a greater premium. Now, in this market, I think as you're spending more money, you might expect to get more expensive materials, maybe better leather, more style, better cuts. You're buying into more prestigious brands. But a lot of that is very subjective. It's very much in the eye of the beholder. But actually, when I look at what we've put together here, I think we've done pretty well. We've got some amazing jeans. I think those are the best jeans on the market. We've got a really cool helmet. It doesn't get better. If we're looking at retro helmets, it's either Shuey or RI, and this is as good as anything on the market. We've got a pair of really fantastic, tough, kick-ass boots, really classic look. We've got some high-end gloves, and okay, they may not seem totally appropriate for wearing with a Bellstaff jacket, but I think we can get away with them. And then, of course, we've got the Bellstaff jacket. And when you put a Bellstaff jacket on, it does feel very special. And there are lots of people out there who just 
can't stand Bell staff who don't understand it, don't understand why people will pay so much for a Bell staff jacket. But I have to tell you, when you've got one, when you've worn one, it just makes you feel very special. They are beautiful bits of kit. So let's look at where we got to on this exercise. In terms of the jeans, we spent £400 on our Rokotec jeans. They're actually priced at £350, but to upgrade them, we wanted to put the ghost armor in the hips and the knees. The helmet is £530. The boots are £300. The gloves are £90, sorry, £190. And the jacket, once we put the D3O back protector in and the ghost in the elbows and the shoulders, this comes in at £1,160. So we've spent a total of £2,580 against a budget of £2,500. To tell the truth, at this price point, who's counting, £80 doesn't seem a great amount. Now, our take on this is that this, from our perspective, is the best of the best. But you could take some of the gear out of our previous reviews and mix it with this. This is very much about what you think everything that we've looked at in all of our reviews, it's all been great gear. And if you want to max or mix and match rather, then that's up to you. What I can tell you is all of the gear here, if you want to drill down in a little bit more detail, if you go onto the website, every single item here is the subject to its own review. But really, I think ultimately it's down to what works for you. And if this outfit doesn't work for you, then go onto YouTube, leave us a comment, tell us what your perfect outfit would be. And I ask that of everybody except the guy in America who, whenever we put out a YouTube review, he comes on board and tells us about his leather jacket, his tasseled leather jacket that's made somewhere in, in Milwaukee. You, we know about already, but anyone else, you're welcome. Give us your views, please. So if you want to see lots more cool gear, visit the website motolegends.com. If you want to learn more about the items that we've been speaking about today, if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you to a page that we've put together that features all of these items. Now, when you're on that page, you can check out the availability, you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail, and obviously if you like any of those items, you can buy one there and then. Now, when you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any protective wear you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. Our price guarantee is by far the best in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price Peters, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. Now, in the future, if you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the top of the page on the website, any page, there's a piece of script there that says newsletter sign up. If you click on that, within seconds you'll be in business. In future, you'll receive our email bulletins. If, however, you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in this form, we would be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make a little play for our shop here at Motor Legends. It's a small shop. We're based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And even though I say it's small, it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of merchandise arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have far and away the best five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. Anyway, this has been Chris at Moto Legends. Hope to talk to you again soon.